Let me all go back to our double XP because I'm ready to start back up. So I haven't played in several hours. Blame the boss man for being late, Yolo. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't blame me. We're late. Start, start eight minutes ago. Anyway, mm. fan topic. We all know there's three classes, three primary roles to all operations: DPS, tier, tank, and healer. There's a purpose for each role, for each class, for all operations, no matter what. Tanks are to maintain and hold aggro during all flashpoints and operations or groups for bosses or anything. Best way to do that, is, and I will be posting this on the forums, but a lot of people will still be kidding. So, no sniper tank? No sniper tank. Taking Aww. classes are only Sith Juggernaut, Sith Assassin, Power Tech, Vanguard, Jedi Shadow, Jedi Guardian. That's all. That's all I can think of. Uh, make sure you always maintain your threats with taunt stacking through your rotations. That way you can build as much threat as possible. Kavi and Rob are perfect examples. They got, what was it, 75 million off Grop fucking Dread Fortress? Yeah. He did, taunt stacked with me and I had 75 million threat by the end. Did anybody ever take aggro off you? No. Hold on. Uh, Rob couldn't in the end. Yeah, he couldn't even take threat off of me after he taunted. You get a gold star. That's proper tanking for holding aggro. Always bubble your highest DPS. That way... Whenever they're DPSing and they will generate threat like a madman, they don't out generate you. Not true what? You want to bubble your healer sometimes in some fights. Yeah, you will. Blah. And that's what I was going to also say. I was just getting to it. And there are going to be instances where you will be bubbling your healers. I think Draxus is a perfect example. Crypto yes. Zero. And Crypt well. Crypto Zero. And the Council Fight. Yeah. But most of the times it will be almost DPS. But there are uh, going to be points where you guard healers. And I do believe there's almost an instance where you guard the other tank. I've heard people do it on Nefra. I don't like yeah. it, but. Yeah, I've seen people do it on Nefra. Yeah. Yeah, there are people who have actually guarded the other tank on Nefra. We've done it on one occasion um, when I don't think, Nathan I don't was think a little minor. Anymore. You can you guard, you guard the main tank guards the off tank. Yeah, that's what it is. You no, guard but if other. if you're in a guard stance, I don't think you can guard somebody already yeah, in a guard stance. But they can't. You can, however, they cannot guard anybody else. Yeah, it's only whenever they're guarding someone else that it has that collision. So, say if you and Hulk were tanking, Hulk could guard you, but you can't guard anybody else. Well, no, yeah. I just thought they changed it recently. Mm -mm. Something they changed recently about guarding, I don't remember what it was. If you're not in a guarding stance, you cannot guard any longer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because there was the power tech glitch still. Continues, everyone. Sorry. Uh... Lastly, is defensive cooldowns, know them, keep them handy, use them if necessary, or when healers tell you. And there will be instances where healers tell you. If a healer tells you to do something, make them happy and just do it. I've seen plenty of healers that will let tanks die for not doing their proper, what was requested of them. Questions on tanks? Thoughts? Comments? Additions? To those that tank regularly, if anybody wants to add anything, I can't think of one. You no, know that whenever uh, you can use your AOE taunt, because it's a good thing to continuously build threat with, as long as nothing will get pulled extra by it. Don't taunt when you don't need to. Seriously, taunting is only a like oh shit moment. It well, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Yeah, because, I mean, honestly, I know... Well, okay, so if you are if you have aggro, then why do you need a taunt? Because you taunt build 10% extra threat. 
and power uh, bursty DPS will still pull off you. Yeah. yeah, they can still catch up, and you you can in your normal rotation you probably pull about two to three k threat, which a good DPS can pull off of. Putting... You may want to still yeah. keep your keep your single taunt available. Say if you're on a boss or whatever, and just AOE taunt, let somebody know your um, opposite tank know. However, always have one taunt available to you. Yeah, exactly. At all times, but no, you want to taunt stack if you can. It is extremely helpful in keeping your burst DPS and your healers alive. There's and only... I know a lot of people do not agree with that, but I have seen it work on so many occasions that it's not even funny anymore. Especially you... after 3.0. You can ask. I can recommend you several other uh, raid leaders that will vouch for it and. Uh... It's, I mean, you gotta know there's a couple fights where you can't use either one. Where, like, uh, Draxus, where you may need to have a ton up at a split second notice, and you may need both of them. But in general, if you know the fights, then you should be able to keep taunt stacking. I think it's case by case when you want to taunt when you don't want to, but taunt stacking should. Not yeah. always good, though. Mostly for boss fights, mainly that you do taunt stacking. Yeah. Because also That's... some bosses will one shot anyone if you lose threat at any point. So recovering yeah, threat is not an option. Or generate more ads. Yeah, like riding horror on hard mode or nightmare. If you get anyone else with it, that's going to cause I a lot just of problems. Taunt, uh, continue taunting and doing my job to, you know, position them so you guys can like backstab them or whatever. You should always taunt and like do your rotation to generate threat while taunting. That way, you're always building that threat. Mm -hmm. So it's taunt stacking plus rotation. That's where some people need to understand when it's, when people say taunt stacking. Always add on with your uh, rotation, throwing a taunt. Yeah. It's not just taunting. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else for tanking? Awesome. DPS. Most troubling role people seem to have. This one will probably cause a lot of sores with others, but there are a few people who I know know better and don't have any problems with. Main jobs are just know your roles, beat the bosses, the mobs. Uh, biggest thing that DPS need to learn when asked or when not asked, just no. Add an aggro dump to your rotation. There was a rule Hulk and I implemented in during a was it hard mode TFP on pub side or M side? I don't remember. I don't remember. But uh, we said during the shred guard fight, you take aggro off us because you're not doing your aggro dumps. You're going to tank the boss. I don't think either one of us really lost the bosses those fights. No. So you're gonna take the boss. You're gonna tank it and cause a wife for the group. That's from now on. Uh, I believe. I don't like people still in aggro. Just add in aggro dumps and you're good. I think too many people think it's it's some kind of a uh, metal on your chest if you can pull aggro off the tank, and it's just it's not. not. You're making it extremely harder on your tanks to do their, ro I their hear, role. I hear a lot of chat, and they always talk about, yeah, the last time I did that, I pulled the aggro off the tank. Well, that's because you're a dumbass. So, if it. you're a tank, you're not, you're not guarding someone, you're wrong. If you're yeah. a healer and you're DPSing, you're wrong. Yeah. If you're DPS and you're pulling off the tanks, you are wrong. You're wrong. Check. Check. check I've seen check. plenty of healers that are DPSing when they're not doing their role. Your you role is have, a healer, so heal. You Don't have DPS. a role. If you are not doing that role, then you are not doing your job and you are failing your raid. Unless you're told to do otherwise by your raid leader. Which I will cover later. But that brings us to the healers. It's always been asked to the healers. 
Wait. Yeah, DPS need to know who to kill, when to kill, how to kill. Focus fire. There are instances of that. So cleansing whenever the ops leader tells them so to. That's part of the. Uh, that's part of the different mechanics. section in his uh, yeah. his little thing. Yeah. Not there yet. If you're asked to off heal by the healers and only the healers, that's fine. That too. My Xbox is getting all pissed off for some reason. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, healers. I, I was going to say, I still think, going back to what you were saying about everybody has a role, that's absolutely true in every fight, and there are always exceptions to everything. So uh, if for yeah. some reason, the, t the healer is really great at healing and nothing's going down and the DPS are struggling sometimes they may be asked to help DPS I don't know a situation I'm just saying if, I can if name a good example I, no I, I don't need examples that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is if the ops decides to do that that's up to the operation all those situations are always you know you can throw in something to help the operation when asked don't let the raid die because you're DPSing and not healing. That's kind of the point. Don't yeah. let the raid die because you're not doing your role properly. Yeah. Draxus is a good example for a lot of these things. Healers sometimes have to interrupt even though your main job is to heal. DPS sometimes are asked to cleanse because, you know, we have sorks or sages and sometimes masks affliction get off and we may not have a sork or a sage as a healer we may have two scoundrels and we can't cleanse that so sometimes there are exceptions to the rules Cyrac. that is a classic example of it right there Cyrac, i don't uh, i don't see uh, cleansing as a, as a healer ability to be honest no i see if you can no, cleanse but something you a lot of people it. do is what i'm saying some people, a lot of a lot of people classify that as a healer role. And I have gotten into yeah, arguments with people in our raids as part of that being I see a that healer as role. more of a utility. It's a utility, yeah. It is like, now. For example, um... It's generally shadow, left to healers unless otherwise specified, yes. And that's exactly what it is. Shadows drop their, their shelter. All shadows can now. A yeah. lot of that has changed because of 3.0, though it's still mainly classified as a healer's job to a lot of people until you get them retrained. And that's what a lot of this part of this Ops 101 is about, is retraining people out of that thinking. It's not just a healer's job to cleanse anymore. Yeah, I'm If you have a cleanse, cleanse yourself. I'm just stupid and don't know when I have one. Well, you're tanking. <laughs> you have it on every class except for uh, marauders and snipers and uh, the three different tanks. And even, but they even still have a semi cleanse. It's just yeah. on a super long cooldown. For them, I'm it's just gonna say, I, I think I have one on my tank. It's really long cooldown. Yeah. yeah. Enraged defense, uh, the cl the stealth out. Um, there's a couple more, but in general, you don't count them as your cleanses unless it's mandatory or it'll you have to really spec into it. I was yeah. gonna say stealth out would be terrible. If you're trying to yeah. hold aggro and then you stealth out to cleanse. That would be awful. Uh, juggernauts is almost impossible to use also on command because it requires you to be at 70% health, but if you do have the option, it will heal you up from the uh, dot, and it will cleanse it. I thought those didn't work in operations. It they do. Doesn't, it doesn't work in the old ones. It may work in the new ones. I haven't tested it out recently. Like I said, a lot of this stuff now is you have to spec into it, into your utilities. Yeah. That's where a lot of it comes into, and people don't spec into it. A lot of your cleanses, your interrupts, all of this stuff you now have to spec into in order to reduce cooldowns. 
There's nobody alive, but... Well, you have to be smart about your utilities. The whole thing about 3.0 is it changed um, how we handled uh, utilities. You used to have to have 200k or go to a um, vendor to uh, redo all your skills. But now all your utility points, no matter what, are unlocked. So you can immediately change around in an ops fight to fit the, the operation. Sometimes you may need uh, to be able to stand a lot of AoEs, and you may need to spec into those utility points. Sometimes you'll need lower cooldowns on your uh, cleanses. You just gotta be smart about the fights and read up. It's gonna be a lot about raid awareness. Sorry for all the interrupting, Severin. Go ahead. No, it's part of the whole deal. I think we almost covered healers in that area. There's instances where healers are always asked who the highest DPS is from the tanks and who they should guard. So healers need to be made aware of that. Cleansing, we've covered that already. Uh, just cleansing. That's covered. Parking. That's Not there yet. Um, no, your interrupts. Yeah. Did I say that? I did. No, I that's just an in general thing. Know your interrupts. What it is. Oh, that's where it is in your bar. Covered. I was getting there. But yeah, know get, your interrupts. Get your reduced interrupt time. Yeah. yeah. If you can. I can't. I can't think of any build that doesn't have that. Everyone does, but sometimes there's something that's a little bit more valuable if the fight doesn't require it. Like, as I was saying earlier, the 30% damage reduction AoE effects. It'd be kind of pointless to get the, uh, yeah. uh, the reduction on it for uh, Brontus, or not Brontus, um, Bestia. If you had it on Bestia, it'd be kind of... Mm. Marauders and Sentinels have, like, the best interrupts ever because of their jumping and actual interrupt. And yeah, the jumping three. requires no distance whatsoever. You can mm -hmm. be right there at the mob and still jump and interrupt it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Guardians and Juggernauts have to get within 10 or whatever it is. Yeah. Or at 30, but no more than 10. 30 to 10, that's it. That's why I like uh, my force push, if I can move them. Yeah, if they don't have that buff. Yeah. Oh, I also know uh, when you can actually CC them to uh, stop their uh, stop their active ability as an interrupt. Don't, don't break. Be careful with the AoEs, don't break CCs. Let's all remember that too. I'm getting whispered in my ear about that. You should have been with us in our raid group last night because we were really good at interrupts last night in CC. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Beware of your AoEs if there's CCs around. That's all I'm going to say. We used to be the whole rule of if you break CC, you're going to tank it. That's up to the leaders. Op leaders. We're not in prog runs. That's dumb. Yeah. Speaking of operations, it brings us to the rules. You know who your leaders and lieutenants are? They'll assign the tasks for each person, tank, DPS, heal, or whatever, if necessary. You know fight of the mechanic? Let us know. We'll... See how we do it, but if we do it a certain way, you can ask for clarification after the fight why it was done the way it was. Oh, wait, what? Repeat that? What? Repeat that last sentence? After the end of the fight, you can ask for clarification the way it was so, done. So not during the fight, or no. before the fight, and make discussions lengthy and unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> You can ask for clarification after the fight as to why it was done the way it was done, 
but it's not successful. during the fight. If you want to talk about it before, don't make it a lengthy BS discussion. Un unless unsuccessful. Not before. If it's after and it was not successful, then you try a different route. Again, you do not sit there, however, and change 85 million things during the progression run. You change one thing at a time so that way you can eliminate the different things that could have gone wrong. But there's not going to be arguing during runs. That's why it's called progression. There's a reason why things are called progression runs. You do things, you learn. It's even learning for leaders. How are you supposed to learn if you can't make mistakes? It's only a problem if you make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And you don't learn from them. Just because one person has cleared it one way, doesn't mean that it hasn't been cleared many different ways. A person may have cleared it one way, and another person may have cleared it another way. Maybe some ravagers, for example. You'd be surprised how... There are many ways, different ways to do things, and it be successful. If you asked a developer uh, that developed a raid how they designed it to be cleared I guarantee it will be different than what people have done and it drives them crazy probably <laughs> it does <laughs> yeah. they'll be like they got through it without doing this this and this what that's not how it's <laughs> supposed to happen <laughs> but much. they go with it Did I not stop and then try to earway? And we also wiped, that one way. Twice, well, that one way may not work for the group that's running it too. I mean, maybe it worked for that other group, but not every group's gonna do it the same, even if you try the same tactics. You gotta find a cell that works for the group you're in. We play um, Star Wars The Old Republic, but right now we're having an operations oh. meeting to discuss our operations, um, uh. rules and regulations and things. Hi. June does raise a point. There have been cases, yes. But things have been getting a lot better. If they aren't, they need to be. They are getting a lot better. A lot of people that have not been running with us of, as of late have not been seeing that there has been a lot more progression. Like, months ago we haven't been able to get to Calpheus. Months ago, months ago we hadn't been able to get to Corruptor Zero. But we are making progress. It's not like we're stagnant anymore. And it's because people are listening. People are trying to work through things.
I'm not invalidating what you guys are saying. I see what you guys are saying, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I do agree with points of what you are making. However, I don't agree fully with what you are saying because I see other things that are going on because I've been on 90% of the raids that have happened. And I haven't led all of them. And since Deathly decided to go run off and play with Dark Hunters, Coffee's taken over progression rooms with the guild. And I haven't run one yet. Which is uh, going to change after the, um... After Double XP Weekend, so it'll be starting up again next weekend. Which will give me a week to start doing my homework. And our ops uh, people will be doing their homework to start doing the operation stuff. Which brings us to our other rules about how things should be approached. Communication? No, how to, how to approach somebody when they're using bad strategy. Blame them for everything and tell them that they're wrong and, and get after them. Got it. No. Just kidding. It's pretty much the first time that things are going on. I mean, it's nice to call them out on it, but the first time it happens, try to approach the subject in private so that way it's not like an 85 million um, hour discussion about what's going on in and turns into an argument in front of an entire group and everybody's like get frustrated and everybody you know what I mean it becomes a long drawn out fight in front of an entire raid group if it's a continuous thing that happens then there's an obvious issue and you go up the chain of command I think we've got people who are ops mentors for a reason and those people should be available for issues like that. So if the strategy stinks or is bad and we keep wiping on something, go to somebody who's done it before, like YOLO or anybody else, any of the ops mentors who may have finished it, and ask them what we're doing wrong. That's, that's a good strategy, rather than banging our heads against the wall for hours at a time. But what I'm saying fun. is in that moment, Instead of getting into an argument right then and there, in the middle of everything in front of God and everybody, approach it in, say, a whisper or in an I am in team speak. Instead of making it a confrontation in front of the entire raid group and bringing everybody in the raid group down. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it ruins the momentum. Because then blame's being thrown around and things like that. And then that is why I said go up the chain of command. Which means, if it's me, then you go to Zoza. Then you go to me, because technically I'm his CO, and, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like in that situation, it kind of goes back and forth. It's really weird. You go to him if it's me, because I'm the CO and he's the Imperator, but you go to me if it's him, because he's the XO, and yeah, it's just really weird on that one. I think the basis is, though, that if we need to change stuff up, we're still going to talk about it, just not in a blatantly argumentative manner. Right. But if you always don't feel comfortable with, say if you're, you're not in the chain of command and you don't feel comfortable with addressing it, you can go to the ops mentors, Rudy, to YOLO, to Thek, 
and bring it up to them and let them address the issue. That is always an option. You can always go to Hulk. You can always go to June. You can always go to Zeverand, to Jeff or Nihilus, and bring the issue up with them and let them handle it. That's what they're there for. Even though a lot of those names are the people I mentioned here. Yes, I agree. I feel far more comfortable if I'm trying to run an operation if somebody who's run it before is with me in case I get jacked up. And when YOLO came back and started running with us, it was a comfort zone for me. Because I've kind of always felt more comfortable in operations when YOLO's been running them. Or at least there. Because one, she has a calming influence on most people. And two, she understands strategy and how most of the things should work. The tank should work. How the healing should work. How it should be done. And that's why she's in the position she is in. So... I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> Same thing when I'm tanking. I kind of like to have Yo uh, Zoza around when I'm tanking. Especially in prog runs. Because he doesn't get freaked out. No, I just drag all my uh, AOEs on everybody. Anything else we need to cover under that one? No? Okay. Favorite topic? Communication. There's way, way too much BS chatter going on during fights. Way too much. Tanks and healers, mostly tanks, usually need to be the ones that do all, if not most, of the talking. As well as the lieutenant and, and raid leader. Because when you have other people talking over you, you're causing issues. And it's annoying. Sometimes healer, when they need a little help... Yeah. You want to mention the class that I ran last week that I'm going to run again this week? Ooh, we might need to do something like that for Tor. How do we do it for that? Uh, Zoza had a class. When did you actually hold it? Thursday? Wednesday? Wednesday. And we did on. We went on TF2 and covered combat tactics. There's a lot of communication. Communication. But it was. Communication needed to happen, not the BS type of talk. I don't care if you type it, just don't talk. Unless you're being disruptive. Because I can yeah. turn off the chat and ignore it. Anything. So, when I... Uh, I don't remember which game it was. I think it was City of Heroes. Yeah, when I ran tactical or task forces in City of Heroes, one of the things we had voice chat, or I had a voice like a ventrilo server or something that I'd invite everybody to. But I always asked everybody that if they have something to say that isn't immediate, like needed to be said right away, just type it. You know, try to avoid typing it during combat. You've got other things to do. But if you want to make an input or just say something random that doesn't really pertain to anything important or specific about the Flashpoint or Task Force or whatever, type it out. Whoever it's meant for, we'll see it eventually. I, just, I think one thing to add to the communications is the prog runs are progression runs. The story mode runs are for entertainment and learning the progression stuff. 
learning the basics of the fight. During story mode runs, all the BS and chat, chat, chatter isn't necessarily going to wipe the raid. During the prog run, everybody needs to concentrate on what they're, what they're doing, so the random innuendo jokes and stuff are not necessary and actually ruin the moment. And it's not fun for everyone, because some people are trying to really focus. And by having these random comments that come in, uh, it just disturbs, one, the progress, and it, it also gets in the heads of everyone else who's trying to do something else. It's not necessary, because somebody, you know, Prog runs aren't necessarily all about fun. Yeah, that covers communication. We've already talked interrupts. So now there's a new rule in place. What? I don't see a problem with it personally, June. Um, well, there is a, um, if Fardo was explaining shit, I would prefer you weren't BSing during that explanation. Because she does type. But, yeah. Hey, yeah. some people are not that aware and it needs to be said. Yeah, I'm totally not aware. Mm. It's been done before. We're doing that during this meeting a lot. Damn Hulk. We just talk, everybody's talking over everybody. Yeah. Not to mention... Yeah. Yeah. Somebody well versed in the fight should be explaining the fight. And it should be just quick because everybody should have watched the video, studied up on it, whatever. So it shouldn't be. I mean, obviously the new flashpoints are different than the other hard modes because the new ones we haven't even finished yet. But there should be one person explaining the fight, it should be short and to the point, we should get on with it. Though everyone should still at least have taken one look at Dolphy before a prog run. So. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Dolphy has an explanation of the flashpoints or operations on there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. On everyone. Uh, she on anyone that comes up in the future, would, she has one up in like two or three days. I would and call that a prerequisite. Yeah. Yeah. Again, well, back to City of Heroes. It's, if you, if you don't know the stuff when you're going in, I don't mind trying to explain it, but it's always nice to have people that already know what they're going to be facing, just despite if they've actually done it themselves before or not. And once we do finish it, as long as sex with, she probably record it and we'll have a video of how to do it because she likes to do that kind of stuff. So we might have our own library eventually of how to compete to complete these fights, which will be really good for us. I still have our attempt at Ravagers last time. Yeah, Blue was always fun. It should almost be like fall coaches going in and looking at the game footage afterwards and seeing what we did wrong and what we did right. That's kind of what those videos should be for. Yeah, if I'm to post that to YouTube, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Otherwise, I just have it on my computer. We are getting a lot better tools, too, because this new parse tool, Star Parse, is way better than the other one. Which I was also going to cover. I'll just go ahead and cover that, skip over something else for the moment. We are using a new parsing system. We're calling it Star We're using Star Parse instead of Parsec. Everyone seems to be liking it a lot more. Same information as what we used in Parsec. My deeps are better than yours. 
it's a way better layout. That's yeah. never going to happen in operations, bad Zoza. <laughs> That's you like, if you're bragging about that stuff, you should not be doing that in operations. Not the intention of that program at all. It is not a DPS race or competition, I mean. Hmm. It is an informative system that will help base. Uh... Fight me for. With a Y7I. Tactical judgments on tanking and other random stuff. There are some people who are very good with their classes, and if you struggle with your class, and you can tell through Parsec, you can ask those people to help you with your rotations. Pardor is always open to helping people, other people as well. And that's kind of that's kind of what we're trying to get used out of Parsec. Is let people in, improve their improve their roles, and this new Parsec lets you see what hits hard and what doesn't. Um, if you're healing at the right time, if you're using your cooldowns, if you're using your uh, interrupts, so on and so forth. Because now we can finally see it with the new little website that was given to us. But, uh, for progression runs, parsing, star parse, whatever you want to call it, is going to be absolutely required. No one's really complained about that anymore, but there were some who was complaining about it. Other ops, they don't matter. People like me and Hulk will probably go in there and have like fun DPS races for random mobs, but... We have been known to do that. But that's only for fun, not for progression. Yes, absolutely, and, uh, not during progression though. You'll probably get your parse asked now, but it's only for constructive criticism, how we can help you improve your rotation and whatnot to improve your parsing as, your, as a DPS or healer or whatever. Because we have people who know those roles for certain classes that can help improve your DPS. Like, I've already given Hezrick a few tips for madness DPS sorts. Are we making, for, I, didn't, I don't know if this is covered yet, but for, for prog runs, are we having a, a mandatory gear rating for your gear? Uh, That's kind of what a progression run is for, though. 186 it. <clears throat> There's things that I haven't um, that I didn't discuss with Zevran yet that aren't in there, like um, the rules for the looting, because we haven't actually fully gone over that yet. But that will be like if you have a piece of gear for the rest of that operation, you can't need on that item, uh, on an item that drops, because you've already got a piece of 192 gear. Give other people a chance to get a piece of gear um like say though if we switch to the republic side like the next day you can need on a piece of 192 for the republic side but if you get a piece and we continue on then you can't need on another piece of gear if you get a piece um, gonna... i would like to try and keep track of it so that you know like two weeks in a row somebody is not getting a piece of gear and nobody is getting nothing however because i just don't I don't want to see, you know, people getting over-geared and other people not getting geared at all. And if that's alright with our progression people, I would like to see if we can do that. I would hope that would always be the thing. Could I understand I, uh... that, but there are some people... Well, that's what I'm trying to see, because I don't want to see people sitting there and getting all of the gear and then somebody not getting anything every single week. You see what I'm saying? We don't want one person being undergeared because they can never like, get good RNG. Like, I have seen Rudy get a roll one week and a roll the next week, and he actually gave me one of his items because I have not, I have didn't get anything for like three weeks. Mm. Or June never getting the main hand for or months, June's, months and months. Yeah, and we had to do like three or special June runs for that, June to yeah. get a main hand. Yeah. And I don't want to see that happen. I want to be able to see people actually get stuff and it be fair 
and everybody be able to get geared. Like um, me for some... Can I uh, say something here? Hmm. Um, the other thing, too, that, that sort of irks me is people coming on, and if you're using a progression run, they're coming on with alt characters rather than the main characters that they want to and expect to get gear for those alt characters. No. It'd be the character that you're running the progression group with, and that is okay. it. Okay. Now, Other than just, that, you have to greed. Yeah. Yes. Just, just a personal thing, though, too. Um, if you're not going to put the effort forward to... Um, do dailies, do weeklies, or whatever. Um, that sort of hampers you on progression run because you're not actually showing any interest in trying to improve yourself on your own. Initiative. You're actually you're not showing any initiative at all. But that's just personal. That's just a personal thought, though. I mean, or, because yeah, that's just personal. But did that explain it a little bit um, better, Yolo? Okay, say like we go through group one, uh, the, um, week one, and you get an implant, and we go through week two, and you get a relic, and we go through week three, and you get another implant, and nobody else has gotten anything. Do you see how that could be? You're getting the gear and nobody else is getting anything because you're winning all the roles. Mm. I want to kind of prevent that. Like, I have... So that way, you know, if you're getting the thing, then okay, Sabrix can, yeah, it, that the next highest role, if you got that, would be, think... say, Fardor. So then I think Fardor we just need it. to be smart about it and make the call, make the judgment when it happens. Yeah. I, I have. I, I have. I'm gonna clarify on what I've been asking, if you don't mind. I um, and I'm gonna give an example. When I played WoW, I ran with the skill, and we would do uh, big raids and whatnot. And one week, the main people who had most of their gear would go through on this end game raid, and they would finish gearing out their main characters. And then the second week, they would switch to their alts, and their alts would get um, the same level of priority as undergeared people's mains. But see, the thing about and my progression runs, my, the, my thing about the progression runs is you pick a character, and that is your character for the progression runs. I don't care yeah. if you're in 192s fully or not. Until my, we get through it. Until we get through the 192s and we move on to Nightmare content. That is your character. I don't care. You are on that character. That is the character you are on, and that is just the end of the story. If you okay. want to, ch if you want to change, well, okay. So I've got a question. If you want to change, you have to clear that with somebody else in the raid because you need to switch that with somebody else in the raid. I'm not talking and about my on doorbell. The fly. Be right back. Uh, Zevran. So if I wanted to change my primary character, example, um. So let's say there are enough tanks on Imperial side and progression needs uh, another DPS. Yeah. Even though my main character is not a DPS, it's a tank. Would my main raiding character, I could just switch it to my DPS? I would think so. My main tune is not my progression tune. My progression tune is more geared. My progression tune is different than my main tune. Well, my progress or my my main tune is more geared, but if I'm switching tunes to be to fill a spot or just to go, that tune might not be as geared as the previous one I was raiding with. I. I think a lot of this is also going to have to be done on a case-by-case -case basis because, for example, if we have like four sorks in a group, that's great, but if I could switch to my sniper as a DPS to give us the ballistic shield as an added effect, it enhances the raid, and if uh, I think it, we have to just base it off of what's occurring at the time and be smart about it and what, talk what to the raid. In the end, we all want to be as fair as possible to everybody. Yeah. 
it'd be great to think that we're gonna. It'd be great to think. It'd be great to think that we're gonna raid, and every week the same characters are gonna show up. But there are gonna be things that are gonna come up, and the person we bring in to fill in may not be the same role, or may not be as geared as the other guy. And I think that's what we're gonna have to deal with on a case by case situation. Like if we have to call Zosa into tank because the other tank or whatever is not here then how do we deal with the roles and the, you know, all if that? There's, if there's a tank missing, I'm going to be looking for a tank. I'm not going to be looking for a DPS and have somebody switch to a tank. Right, but if Zoza's main character for for these runs is a DPS, but he steps into tank. I'm not going to be looking for Zoza's main uh, other uh, all to do it. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to be looking, I'm going to have a list of people, and I'm, they're going to be choosing their main character, and that's the list I'm choosing from. I'm not choosing from your alts. Do you see what I'm saying? No. The original question was, if I, I have... Basically, a... I'm going to okay, sit here... Me... Oh, Let's hold on. Let's finish. So, originally the question was, if I have Zara as my primary rating character, but there has been recently more of a need for DPS and not Zara because there are plenty of tanks on Imperial side. Then can I switch to my DPS being my primary raiding character? No, because that means we just need to start forming a second uh, uh, progression run. My goal is to have more than one progression run. That just means we need to start making another one. We have, if, okay, this is why I wanted to explain further before you started going on. My goal is to have more than one raiding team. We're going to have an eight-man raiding team. Eventually, we will merge that into a 16-man raiding team, but we have to have 16, two raiding teams at the same level first. However, with those eight people, we're going to have eight main characters. We will have some substitute people with eight main characters, or whatever main characters. Um, at least one of each class on the side. You will have your main characters. That is it. There won't be alt characters. I'm not going to choose from alt characters at all. Like, Saver Nathan will have Savrix. That is his main for progression rates. I'm not going to be trying to get him to tank anything. I'm not going to be trying to get him to heal a progression run. Well, hold on. That's the issue is... I... Hold on. If I need a healer, I'm going to be looking on my list for a person that has a healer to heal as their main character. If there's not enough of that, then I need to look for somebody that wants to heal in a progression run and bring them in. And can help them gear. That's what I'm trying to say. If we're lacking it, then I need to find somebody that wants to get into the endgame content and start helping them to get into it so that way we can pull them in. But you're going to have your main characters, and I want you to stick to those main characters. I don't want you to switch from those main characters. I don't want to hear about the alts for those main for anything other than your main characters, because I want those eight characters, and I want those eight characters only. We can move on to other characters later, but as of right now, I want eight strong main characters. So that way we don't have to worry about people trying to gear alts. And there won't be second guessing or anything like that. Do you see what I'm saying? It's always supposed to be those eight guys with some substitutes on the side. That's it. That is what a good progression team has. They have their main, their main core group, 
and then they have their alts for when that core group cannot get together. This is what I have learned. This is what I have read about. This is what YOLO has taught me. This is what Dark Hunters has taught me. That's why I'm so insistent on the simple fact that I want to keep track of gear that people are getting so that way we're not gearing too many people with too much stuff. Because this way it becomes uneven, unbalanced. You're just doing the progression run of disservice by porting. It's pretty much, I if I sit there and I, if, if too many people have 192 pieces, you know, it becomes this DPS is pulling way too much from the tank because the tank is out, is being out geared. And I don't, yeah, you want your DPS to have some gear, but I don't want to see that happening. Yeah, exactly. And that's also why a lot of the progression stuff is happening on the weekends, because it's a little bit easier to commit to. And it also gets to the point where people expect you to play a specific role, then they know that you're going to know how to play that role. They know, they know from the back of the hand that you're good at that role. They know that you know what you're going to do, and they don't have to worry about anything being a stupid move, pretty much, unless it's an accident. I mean, shit happens, obviously, but... It's not going to be a, a noob move, pretty much. If there's no improvement, then yes, that's pretty much why, um, why I've kind of put in there that, you know, Star Parse is going to be mandatory and if there is no sign of improvement if the rage timers keep happening I am going to ask you for parses to see what's going on it's a lot of the reason why I've put that in there and I don't want you to take a f you know offense to it but it's just to see how we can improve there should be a main progression group and then there should be a progression group for those who aren't as aggressive mm -hmm. Because that right would be now, the substitute group. I, I, right now, the last couple of progression runs we've had, we've had players in there in the progression runs who have very little business being in there because they have not cleared regular content. If you've never seen the fight before and we're in it, yep. you're wrong. Yep. And that's happened the last like three times we did hard mode stuff. Uh, oh, is this different than the main one? Yeah. Well, that's why I've been trying to take people on hard modes randomly that's why I started pulling people during the week to run hard mode so that way they can see the fights when we start doing prog runs of the hard modes I have reasons for doing this stuff people just never ask and people get upset at me when I try and treat it like a prog run there's reasons why I do this it's just nobody seemed to ask me, Kavi, what, what's going on? Why are we doing this? Oh? You know, if you have a question about why I'm doing something, feel free to ask. I'm not going to sit there and say, none of your business. Just go away. I I'm not like that. There's generally reasons why I do things the way I do. Which is why I said, you know, if there's anything that happens, don't question your raid leaders at the time. You know, ask them, you know... After it happens, like, okay, well, I noticed we did this in the fight. Why did we do this? Could we have done it this way instead? There's nothing wrong with that. And it's all about how you approach things. If you come at it like, well, that was fucking dumb. What the fuck we do that for? Yeah, there's going to be aggression. And yeah, it's going to be stupid. And yeah, it's going to lead to a fight. But if you sit there and approach it like, 
You know, I've kind of seen it done this way. Maybe we could kind of do it this way. You know what I mean? There's all different ways to approach things, and I'm one of those people that needs to learn that. And I am not excluding myself from this. I am probably one of the most important people that probably need to learn how to word my things correctly. I'll sit there and ask everyone all the time, what the fuck is your issue? I need to stop that. And I'm working on it. <laughs> but it is all in how you word nice. conversations. And a lot of our problems is how we word conversations when we approach topics. Sometimes confronting people by typing is not the best way either, because you can't mm -hmm. tell the stance that they're coming at you from. Yep. Can I just say something? Hmm. Okay, since... Sorry, I was tabbed out a bit, so I hope this is actually relevant to what we're talking about. When we have issues in the raid group and you see something wrong with someone, there's two things that I see with every single time it happens. Either the person who has the criticism is really aggressive about it and you sound like you're a huge raging dick, even if you're trying not meant not to be, and or the person who is being criticized gets super fucking defensive. So um, um, like the criticisms, you have to look at it both ways because a lot of times I see it, it's a lose lose situation you have to be able to you have to be willing to take criticism if you're in these prog runs and you have to know how to give it nicely in the prog runs like no i'm not saying pat their ass but there's a way to do it there is and we all need to stop being so sensitive as well i know i'm sensitive about things and I take things a lot harder than I should. And I get offensive. And People need to stop being defensive. I didn't say defensive, like, I said offensive. We're not like Trox here who was a tool bag. I'm sure we all had to deal with him. Just be open to suggestions that maybe, hey, you are not doing something quite right. And don't bite someone's head off if they're saying something to you about it. Be like, oh, hey. What am I doing wrong? And if they point it out and say, try this instead, try it instead. It's not a personal attack. Your life is not your character. Your reputation does not hang on this particular prog run. Thank you, YOLO. But also on that same note, Far, it's all in how you approach it. You don't have to be a dick about how you tell it either. That's another thing. Don't be a dick on how you tell it. For example, Hulk, the fuck, why did you pull it like that? I had it on an AoE taunt, what the hell were you doing? That's not how you do it. Hey Hulk, I noticed on that last run you, um, you pulled them off me. Uh, what was going on? Even that, that sounds a little dickish. You just hey, gotta- Hey Carol thanks for coming. Even with some criticism, even you might not win, you're just going to sound a little dickish. Try and be nice about it. Hmm. Hey Hulk, on that last run, you pulled them off. Uh, what did I miss? Did I miss something there? It, oh it's no, that was better to be straightforward, like you're yes. saying right there. Be straightforward and be open to the fact you might have screwed up. Because June See, thinks I'm a terrible tank thought... anyway, so she's welcome to criticize me anyway. So, yeah, but she... on that same <laughs> note. Hulk, we were on a prog run and I was off tanking it on my DPS Guardian. And you and I did well because I was open to you telling me what to do. No, I I agree. I don't have problem. I try not to have problems taking criticism. I do have problems taking criticism from certain people. I try not to, though. That's all I'm saying. Yep, don't be a dick and be open to the criticism. But Yolo, um, back to the gear thing. Did that make a little bit more sense, though? Trying to gear the team together instead of having one person out gear everybody else. Like me having two full sets of uh, 162s and 168s.
Yeah, I think until we put it in play, it's going to be com complicated to try to figure out. I mean, I've just, I've been, I've been in the Deathly's prog run, and I've seen, like, everybody else win rolls, and I haven't won actually a single roll for a relic or an implant yet. The only reason why I got one is because Rudy won two, and he gave me one. But I've seen everybody else that has run, been in those prog runs win something. Can I make a suggestion? Bobby? Hmm. Regarding the loot? Hmm. How about instead of, you know, the rolling, since you're going to have the same eight man team regardless, you have a master looter who knows what people, you know, kind of deceased, what it would be the better upgrade for. And that way it just kind of gets passed down the line. Because people would kind of go crazy. Because right now, everybody could benefit from it. We're at that point right now where everybody can, everybody can benefit from the 192. And Master Looter lends Master itself. Looter. Master Looter lends itself to abuse, and I'm sorry, people who play video games don't know how to take coming in second place well, and if they don't get the loot, they're gonna flip their shit. But... Yeah, favoritism and so forth. People. Just I guess I like to think for... that we're above that, but we're not. I'll, I'll be honest. It's... I've been pretty disappointed <laughs> about loot before. Well, that's kind of where a chart or. It you know, a list of items might come in handy. Where if you know who's gotten what, then you can just use that and be like, okay, well, that got you know, a relic or whatever and so Zeverin needs this relic. Or something like that. I mean, it's not gonna completely bypass anyone being a dick or favoritism or whatever, but it might help a little bit. If the person who's doing it is honest. I, just don't think I honestly was going to have our progs people do it. And you're saying that you can't, if you get a piece of loot one week, you can't get it the rest, any more the rest of the week on that lockout, correct? No. Alright, then how are we keeping track of that? Are we, like, putting it in activity reports or what's that? No, that oh. one. Uh... It would be that run. So, like, and if we do Ravagers everybody, and we get, like... List. So, if we do Ravagers and there's three 192 pieces that come up, if you get one for that run of Ravagers, you cannot get another no, one. No, 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 that run. Think suicide list. You go to the bottom of the list and you can't really roll again until everybody else gets something. I think Feck just yeah. got interrupted. Are you still saying something there, Feck? Um, no, I think that was pretty much it. Just kind of be aware that I can't see TeamSpeak because I am in the game and that's how I'm recording this dialogue. So, I can't see what's going on in TeamSpeak. I don't think we're to a point yet where we need to start using a suicide list. Well, I also kind of find it surprising that, you know, the people who are going to run prog runs, that we don't think that they're honest enough to fairly divvy out gear. Uh, to me, that well, kind of seems like a fundamental problem. Honestly, as it stands, my, my, um, on the Imperial side, my operative it's pretty much in, it can't use anything 192 except for an earpiece earpiece wow <laughs> earpiece and relics I can't use anything else 192 except set bonus pieces so anything that drops the only thing I need are set bonuses so I'm not going to be rolling on anything other than that so What the hell are you guys talking about? Well, it's kind of going back to what Mel was saying before of why can't there be a master looter to divvy up the gear fairly? If because we can't trust the leader to do that, because then that's an the issue in itself. Is winning stuff. That's part of the fun of it. You're taking all the fun out of it to begin with. Because Prog runs aren't meant to be fun. 
Unfortunately. Then nobody was gonna do them. They have to still be fun at the game. No, Prague is fun. It, it can be, but also people, honestly, there's a, there's been a lot of occasions where we thought it would work fine because we thought everyone could just get along, but there's been a lot of occasions where it's like, well, that's out the door. And yeah, but what's not fun is kind of like what Kavya was saying, where she run a whole bunch of you know, progression runs and not get anything. That's also not fun. Okay. That's um, very discouraging. So if we're rolling on loot, we should roll for blame on wipes, too. <laughs> just saying. That's well, a whole other issue. You have a master looter and then just slash roll. That way it'll, it doesn't have the whatever obsolete think... being the one deciding on who gets gear. Yeah. You eliminate the ninja need and you still have the RNG element that is the fairness of women. I agree with that, because when I'm running an operation, I hate doing the Master Looter, because I never feel like I do it properly. And I think this kind of depends on whoever is running the operation. Which is the question, who is good at running the prog runs? Kavya. She's Me. running the prog runs. Okay. And I will but have I an ops leader on options. at the time be my LT. So if that's YOLO, that's YOLO. If that's Rudy, that's Rudy. Whoever it happens to be. If both of you, if, and if I'm screwed. If it's going to be your run, then how do you want to do it? It will be Master Looter and we can roll. Cool. That, that settles good. that. Yep, then we're done. We don't need to argue that anymore. It seems to be the best if, of both worlds and the easiest to be fair. If I'm running it, it'll be the same. Master Booter. And Our if we're going to do the Master Looter thing, we need a way of knowing. Among the group. Oh, sorry, that <laughs> If we're going to do the Master Looter thing, then shouldn't there be something maybe even on the forums that shows, you know, who got what piece of gear? It will be in the active so. video report. Okay. That's a good way to do it, too. Also, for prog runs, crafting mats will go to the guild. Good. good. Makes sense. I assume yeah. we're going to be supplying stims and shit. Yeah. Um, yes, I usually do. Cool. Makes sense, then. I have tons of characters now with 500, so I'll be contributing to that eventually as well. I have a stack of, like, 50 made of stims, so I'm okay for a while. Well, Should we be putting materials in the guild bank? If so, what kind? Because I have like five cargo bays worth of friggin... Um, <laughs> honestly, the big thing I need right now are the autoimmune regular or whatever the purples are. I'm not on a biochem right now. Purples for the purple stems. It's the autoimmune regulators. Yeah, those. That's the only thing I need. Because I'm running low on those. are hard to come by. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, like what, two a piece on for the Jawa junk? I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fire's right. Only grade eleven uh, mats, which should go in the guild bank supply section. Yeah, please don't okay. put anything else in there, because then Fardor has to go through and have a rum and sell. Yep. Because metal and stuff is super, super easy to come by. But Nathan, um, anything else? Just your strike system. Oh, also, we're no longer doing story modes as part of our operation system. We will do them for fun runs. We will do drunk operations for fun runs. However, our operation schedule is no longer an operation schedule. Our operation schedule is now known as a hard mode schedule. Which, which includes hard mode flashpoints, hard mode operations, and hard mode whatever the hell else we want to do. We are no longer story mode um, people. Yep. We can fly through story mode operations now. We have no business just doing them. Except for fun. Oh, we have and business comms. But I need recording. <laughs> like I said, for fun and comms. 
<laughs> oh, an achievement. But as far as anything else goes, we need to be tackling hard mode content. That is where we need to be right now. Big girl panties, big boy panties are where we need to be. <laughs> Go ahead, Nathan. I figure I'll just let you finish it up. No, go ahead. I'm not looking I mean, at your list. I think I'm scared now. So I didn't come up with this strike rule system. This is between Kavi and the Ops Mentors. June was present for some of it. I didn't I go. I wasn't I involved. But, uh... You weren't there! You were never around! You we weren't... tried to have a meeting. You said have do whatever when you're around. So... So, like I said, this isn't me. This is coming from my higher up. You're good at it. Strike one, you're going to get an informal warning, which is a uh, whisper. Nobody else will be told. Second strike, you're going to be called out in front of God and everyone. Third one, you're going to get kicked from the group and you'll be replaced. No questions, no whining. Not my rules. Prog runs. Prog runs only. Prog runs. That rule was long fucking overdue. <laughs> yes, it is. Basically. <laughs> that's Kavi. I don't know what comes um, Honestly, right? truthfully, if you're not listening, if you're fucking around too much, if there's too much bullshit going on, if you're told, if you're asked not to do something and you do it anyway, just to be difficult, that's a strike. That should be a kick. <laughs> I'm sorry, you will be that's asked... Baggery. You, you'll be asked not to do it again. You will be given that warning. That will be your warning. If you do it again, I'm going to tell you, knock it off. That'll be straightforward. If you do it again, I'm just going to pretty much kick you from the group. That'll be the end of the story. You will not run with me again. Until you can straighten your shit out. Beatings will commence right after the raid. If it becomes an issue, then during the ops runs, then Zevrind or myself will deal with it afterwards. You don't want As me or help to do it. After this, or June. Yeah. Because I always let. Or Jeff. Throw or June Jeff. to the beatings. I just I don't want everyone in the in the prog run getting on somebody it should oh. be the ops lead or the ops lead's assistant or the officers but not everyone else if something happens let the ops lead deal with it don't everybody jump in and start bagging on them because maybe they just made a mistake pretty much I'm not gonna when the when the um when the second strike happens, I'll probably already be looking for a replacement. Yeah, it should um, be guild though. I want it to be guild only thing. Our We're progression prog runs run. our progression runs will be guild only. Yeah. I'm pretty much done. Uh, looking wanna... for things out of guild. I want us to accomplish things as a guild and do things as a guild. I am yeah. not looking for out of guild things for anything. This is ordo time. Order is going to be taking over. Yeah, I agree. I think I I would I want to when we finished off nine for the first time that was great. As a guild, everybody's done it. Everybody had done it before that by themselves or whatever. But finishing it as a guild was kind of cool. And some of that stuff is pretty fun. I don't know. Are we finished? Is there more? Mm. I'm done. The only thing I had left is pretty much that we're here to have fun. This is not a job. However, I'm tired of treating everybody like children because you're not children. 
And I'm not going to put up with people acting like children anymore. You're all grown adults. Put on the big girl panties. Let's get this shit done. Get contact wipe content wiped out. Get on the nightmare shit. And let's conquer this world. This galaxy. We're all long overdue. But you can right? be children you can be children in non prog run. No, you can be children up in the drunk tank with YOLO doing half naked or naked ops. Drunk ops. That's where you can be children. <laughs> I have cleared this, it is happening. Y'all can have fun. That's where yes, you also YOLO, figure YOLO, you can bring back your drunk ops. It has to be in the drunk tank. I have told the June this. Only in the drunk <laughs> tank. But that also gives you the ability to figure things out, because a lot of bullshit happens during drunk ops. Why did you, you kill them? Yeah, you have to be on your feet. Yeah, why did you Ooh. kick him? Who was that? I don't know who the hell he is, and we're trying to do a meeting, so he got booted out. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she is the pimp hand. No, I'm sorry. I don't want to deal with shit right now. Yep. Carry on the meeting. I'm done. We're done. But it's done. I'm going to have to level with my shadow. As the military likes to say, I don't know. Not that, though. They don't say that. <clears throat> Yo, Zozo would probably kick my ass. <laughs> I was gonna say, what the? <laughs> Growing up in a military family, I know better than that. What? Hold on, hold on. Um, our ops hard mode schedule. Sorry. World boss Wednesdays, Flashpoint Fridays, hard modes only. Leftover Mondays is still Zozo's thing, so I don't care what the hell he does. Tuesdays are imp operations in preparation for whatever. Tuesdays are pub operations for whatever. Saturdays and Sundays are prog groups, but we are not doing scum and villainy right now. For anything. Oh. Why? Because we have so many issues with frickin' what's his face in the beginning. I want to conquer other content, get past Corruptor Zero, and, um, what's his face? Calpheus first. As long as you can explain so we're starting on uh, Dread yeah. Pal. We're starting on Dread Fortress and Dread Palace. Okay, I want to get say. those done. Oh, world bosses. Cool. World boss Wednesdays coming back. Fresh Flashpoint Fridays are coming back. And Thursday. Oh, fudge. Maybe we'll move training, uh, uh, pub operations to Mondays, and do training no, some no. Thursdays. When my Wednesday training. Wednesday. I'm the just robots saying, can be in the in the morning. Yeah. And then your training can be on Wednesday night. Just keep it in mind. Your training can be on Wednesday night instead. But yeah, so that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Um, but as a progression group, we're gonna start with uh, Dread Fortress. Cool. And then we're gonna work our way around um, Dread Fortress, Dread Palace. We'll do TFB. Um, because I want to get those through. I want it until we can do it with our eyes closed. And it's going to be frustrating. Make sure you have money. We're going to wipe. We, we all know this. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. But we'll get through it. Yep. But I figure we know those first before we start hitting Ravagers and stuff like that. And, like, we can get the, um, on Tuesdays and... Thursdays, we can hit Ravagers first and start getting the implants and, and relics to upgrade that stuff first. In preparation and make sure everybody gets implants and relics as 192s. If that makes sense. To yeah. the first boss of each until everybody has implants and relics and then we'll worry about anything else. But this will also help this will also help with getting people those set bonuses for the new gear. So at least everybody will have a set bonus. I don't have a set bonus on Cell. But she's all in 192s. I've never had a set bonus on her.
I've got to sit here, and I've got to do the llama droid, and I'm trying to eat to put it off. And I know Mal's mm -hmm. in this channel, but I'm trying to eat, trying to put it off. I do not have permission to view the op schedule. What? She doesn't I have clicked permission. The, the op schedule link thing in TeamSpeak, and I don't have permission to view it. Were you already logged in and everything? Yeah. Mm. I gotta say, so I'll just ask you what time are oh, we that's, running? Oh, that's because it hasn't been updated. And okay. if that's on the forums, it's probably... What the hell is that? Be in the command section right now? I don't know where the hell it is. It probably is if I can't get to it. It could be um, I don't normal. know. It could be in the normal tour section. It may just be locked so no one can view it until it's finished. But uh, that's like really old. But it needs to be taken out of there. And I thought I told Nathan to do that, but whatever. I think so, Mal. And unless there's something else. But no, we're done. Okay, so what times are we running then? For the programs. Um, I've been normally starting it about 6 Pacific, 6.30, 7, between 6 and 7, because it depends on when Hulk gets home, because he, uh, um, I know he wants to run it. Yeah, and that's doable. Um, are we running two hours, three hours? Do two hours, that's it. Okay. I, cool. I don't like trying to run more than that. And whoever's my LT, I'm going to need to keep track of that, because I'm bad at that. Keep track of what? How long we're running. Oh yeah, I'll... I can keep track of that easily. Ever since I've gone on full screen, have to always.